little bit of the, the, that part of it. Um, I thought Devin early on was a little anxious, um, but then I think for him, once he, he gets hit and gets a little tired, he calms down a little bit. You can see the talent there. So um, we'll look at the film and see, but I thought Kyle came out um, pretty efficiently overall. Um, and, and I thought Devin made some plays as well. Yes. Can you hit this trembling? No, not right now. Okay, uh, so over here to the left, Bill Rabinowitz, Columbus Dispatch. Yeah, I'll just ask you a point. Play. Did Kyle do enough today to cement the starting quarterback job? Uh, we'll look at it over this weekend and try to try to see if 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 he's taking that step um, and kind of where we're going. I'm not ready to make a decision right now. Over here to the left, Clay right Hall, now. or to the right, Clay Hall. What did they have follow up? Go ahead, Bill. Yeah, my was bad. Was there something that that did impress you? Yes. Like Kyle did today well, that I, didn't I, last week? I thought he came out of the gate. Well, you know, um, I think there was, you know, something maybe in the back end early on for them that they, you know, but he found it, found Marvin, then, then hit the play action. I, I think early in games like this, how you play matters. And I like how he came out of the gates uh, playing well. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're fresh. They're playing their best football in that first quarter. And, and you want to see us playing good football. And, you know, he made some nice throws early on. And that, that was good. And he got himself into a rhythm um, and, and showed, you know, that, he can make some of those throws, and that's important. And I thought even in the two-minute drill, um, you know, he, he I know he wants that first one back. He's got to get that ball out of his hand a little bit faster. The second one, you know, Marv did drop. You know, it's, it's rare that he drops one. Um, and then he was smart on third down and not forcing it. So, um, you know, overall, I thought he was solid, but we'll look at the film and see. Over here to the right, Clay Hall, and then, Clay, give it to Nathan when you're done. You got WSYX. it. Uh, would Kyle have more privileges now? Uh, does – can he – improvise in any way or does he still have to be right on plan uh, yeah, well, a, I, as you orchestrate it? I, I think as we start to uh, get more games under our belt, you'll start to see more and more open up. But, um, you know, he, he looked more comfortable for sure in this game. And, um, you know, every, every time you play, and that's why we try to get Devin more snaps to get kind of those, those first things flushed out, you know, things maybe you saw Kyle in the first game, you know, um, that way, you know, you saw maybe a little bit with Devin in this game. Um, but I don't, I don't think Kyle really missed any throws, maybe a read or two. Um, nah, I guess maybe there was a couple, but but I thought he was much more efficient in this game. I think he was more comfortable back there. At least it looked that way to me. He's not the full-fledged starter yet. Uh, we'll see. We'll look at the film and, and kind of evaluate it after we watch the film and go from there. And like I said, we'll take it week to week. Over here to the left, Rob Aller, Columbus Dispatch, then give it to Joe, please. Yeah, it's, it's fairly or unfairly quarterbacks are, are compared against the guys that preceded him. Mm. Uh, CJ was great. It's seeing the field, reading the field. Where is Kyle in that specific area? And he did look more poised, I thought, yeah. in the pocket. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. Um, it, it is hard to compare to other quarterbacks, but I think the more you play, the better you see it. And, um, you know, I remember that first game against Minnesota, um, you know, CJ struggled in like in that first half and then really calmed down in the second half. And then, um, it did some really good things in the Oregon game, you know, through, um, uh, you know, th through a couple balls in the coverage in that game, but there was enough in that game to say, Ooh, we might have something here, even though we lost the game and it was, people were coming at him hard. He threw over 400 yards in that game because we had to, you know, we didn't do a good job running the ball there. Um, and then you could start, start to see it develop over time. And, and it was a tough stretch in there, you know, but, you think about Dwayne, you know, I just kind of felt like Dwayne saw it. You, know, you could kind of see that early on. Uh, Justin, that was a little bit different. You know, he it, it took him until almost past the Michigan State game before he really got – but he was so athletic he could make plays with his feet. So I guess I go through those guys because you're asking about the, his predecessors. predecessors and um, I don't think we'll know the answer to that until we get a few more games in. The same thing with Devin. Um, you know, because when, when you're seeing it for the first – I remember being a quarterback. It's like what – you put the film on, you're like, what – what did I see? And then the next time you do it, you're like, oh, okay. And then, and then sometimes you come out of games, you're like, I don't even know what just happened in that game. I just found the flow of the game. I found the rhythm of the game. And that's something we talk to our quarters about. Find the speed of the game. Because if you're too slow, not good. If you're too fast, not good. And that's part of playing this game. And so we tried to get uh, both guys into a rhythm early on. Um, sort of did that. Um, we'll continue to try to do that. Uh, over here to the right, Nathan Baird, Cleveland.com, and then pass it over to Austin Ward, please. But last week, Indiana's offensive playing style yeah. limited the number of possessions you had. 
today was Youngstown takes ex- execution at times and maybe lack thereof from your defenses. What did you see defensively and an inability to get off the field sometimes? Yeah. Um, you know, that's, that's why we took the ball early. Um, I, I felt like maybe that would be their game plan. Uh, I didn't know that they would, you know, huddle and, and milk it all the way down to inside of 10 seconds and then try to run it on third down just to keep the clock going. But they did, and that's smart on their end. Um, maybe, maybe some teams are going to do that more and more. And um, it does create a level of anxiety um, because we're used to getting about 15 possessions a game and scoring you know, 60 and 70 points. But uh, we had nine possessions. We're not used to having nine possessions. It's 60 plays. There's a lot of guys that we're trying to get out in the field and get touches to and, and play. And, and, boy, when you only have 60 plays every single rep, I mean, you got to be on point. And, you know, there's going to be certain guys that don't touch it when there's 60, point, 60 plays. So, yeah, I mean, every time there was a third down and, or, you know, a first down on defense, I mean, I was like, I was struggling because I knew what, where we were headed. So, um, you know, it's the defense's job to, to hold, the, uh, hold the other team to, you know, uh, not scoring very many points. And they've done that. I mean, three and seven, you can't ask for much more. But in a game like this where the other team's trying to just milk the clock and limit your possessions, yeah, we would love to see us get off the field more. So we'll look at the, 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 uh, the film and see where that was and see if we can find out where the execution breakdowns were. Over here to the uh, left, Joe Nugent, WCMH, and then give it to Dan, please. How good was it to see Marv get going early and have a big day? Yeah, yeah, uh, great, great. Um, and, and when you know uh, you're in for one of these days that, you know, the, the clock's going to get milked out a little bit, you know, you want to make sure that you're getting those touches early on. So to see him get those two big plays early, was that was a, a deep breath. Um, but uh, we targeted him a bunch. We targeted Mecca a bunch. Um, and then sometimes, you know, it just it works out that way based on the play. Even the, the long run, the long pass that he had, that play really wasn't designed for him. But he popped on it. And, and um, you know, that kind of surprised all of us on third down. The, the guy you think that they'd be doubling would be him. And, and all of a sudden he popped. And so Kyle found him. Uh, great. Did a great job. Um, but yeah, good to get him, you know, his touches and his targets. You know, because we, we did the same. We tried last week. It's just sometimes when they take it away. The ball has to go somewhere else. Over here to the right, Austin Ward, rivals. And then give it to Dylan, please. Ryan, I don't want to put words in your mouth, so I don't. If you ever have any disappointment or frustration going through a game offensively right now, how difficult is that because of the standard of a year ago with CJ and three NFL offensive linemen <coughs> in your mind to, I don't know, get through the growing pains and evaluate that when you probably, when we got used to watching more points and you probably got used to scoring more points? Yeah. Um, I think that the difference right now is just the number of plays. Yeah. Because if, you know, you don't get called for holding there and we score, it's 42 and we scored six touchdowns and nine possessions. You know, we take that 67% of our drives scoring touchdowns. Um, but to your point, yeah, I mean, we're, we're used to scoring 60 and 70 in some of these games and um, it, it's for a couple of different reasons. One, you know, maybe not as efficient as we've been, um, but I thought we were pretty decent in the first half. Um, but then too, just the way that it's going with, with this, with this clock and, Teams, you know, huddling and snapping it inside of 10 seconds. And um, it doesn't take much to get a couple first downs. And before you know it, you know, you've all look up and you've had three plays in the third quarter and there's like four minutes to go. So um, something we just have to recognize. And um, I think we saw it coming. I talked to Jerry about that going into the first game. I said, this is going to be an interesting year because of this rule. And, uh, man, that, that clock just keeps keeps seems to keep running. And um, so we'll, we'll just we'll have to be more efficient and um and do a great job, especially in the first half of coming out of the gates and being, you know, really good with that, which, again, I thought we did that on offense. We were much more efficient, you know, regardless of, of the opponent. You know, you have to make sure you're clean. I did think the protection was good on the offensive line. That was solid. Uh, bigger challenges to come. Uh, over to the left, Dan. Hope 11 Warriors, and then give it to Pat, please. Ryan, with the Notre Dame game coming up in a couple of weeks, is there more of a sense of urgency going into this next week to settle in on one quarterback and start to give one guy all the reps? I think that's, that's worth considering. Yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah, I think that's something that, you know, we got to talk about as a staff over here, uh, Dylan Davis, Delaware Gazette, and then give it to Spencer, please. I guess just expanding on what he said, like how important is that for a quarterback to be able to have a full week of going in as the unquestioned leader of a team before they have to go into a, a challenge like Notre Dame? Is that, I mean, how much stock do you put in that? Is that, is that a real part of it or? Um, I don't know. I don't I, you know, I'll probably get on this film, figure it out, figure out what this next week looks like. And then we'll, we'll figure out Notre Dame when we get there. But I think, again, it's a legitimate question. Yeah. I don't, I don't have the answer for you right now, but I, it's a, I understand what you're asking. We're just going to focus on Western Kentucky now and, um, you know, do the best we can to grow this week. You know, this isn't about, you know, 
winning this game. Certainly we have to win this game, but we, you know, we have big goals in mind. We're building this thing for the, for the long run. And, you know, uh, we have high expectations. You know, we want to be perfect. We know where we need to be. So we're not accepting anything other than excellence. And we know what that looks like. And it isn't just built in one week. So we're growing towards that. The guys are into it. They, they know what it takes. And, you know, we've been in a situation where, you know, early in the season, you know, it feels like, okay, we're going right to the national championship. It doesn't work that way. You have to build the foundation the right way for the long haul. And I think our guys are bit into that and understand that. So we just need another great week of work this week and keep learning and pushing and getting these guys as many reps as we can. Guys, we're going to have just time for a couple more, and then we're going to get some players up here over to the left. Pat Murphy, 24-7 Sports. Ryan, after last week's game, you mentioned you mentioned uh, chips running today. Uh, Travion's over 11.2 yeah. yards per carry. Is this how you see this running back room playing out throughout the year, different guys popping each week perhaps? It's good. Another great question. I, I don't – when you have 60 plays, uh, man, there's just not a lot of – not a lot of rushes to go around, you know, when you – um, so it's, it, it's, it's, it is what it is. Um, you know, I, I really wanted to try to get Travion on the ball. I think there was two, maybe was there two runs that he had that were, there were holds or maybe that, I don't, um, you know, he did have, um, I guess two catches. Um, yeah, he had, he had the two screens, you know, and, um, so we got to we got to keep trying to find the ways to get him the ball as well, running the ball, but but also out in space because he's so good in space. You see how fast he is when he gets to that edge. I mean, it's it's got a chance to go. Um, I know he was, you know, he came over and felt awful about reaching the ball out, but boy, he hit that hole hard. I mean, he was running downhill today when he had an opportunity to, do, and that was a great step. I was very impressed with that. So that was good. Um, but you know, he's going to have to be in games where he runs the ball more for sure. So um, you know, we'll keep doing that, but. Again, I just go back to in a game like this when that clock's running and I'm looking at it, you know, I'm just thinking about throwing the ball more so that we can get more plays because I just feel like there's a lot of guys on our team that deserve to play. When you only have 60, there's just not a lot of plays to go around. And these kids deserve to get out in the field. So um, it's it's a little bit frustrating, but we've got to deal with it. Over here to the right, Spencer Holbrook, Letterman Row. Right, when it comes to the offensive line, uh, it seems like the progress isn't exactly linear. Like you, right. you get better uh, run blocking, you get better pass blocking, you get the penalties. Last week you don't have the, yeah. the penalties, but when do you need to start seeing progress become linear in that unit? And and what does that look like uh, moving forward to make sure that you guys know you can go to South Bend and, and be able to take care of business? Yeah, like yesterday. You know, we, we have urgency. We want it now. Um, we're not going to wait around and say, well, we'll get it next week. we got to get it fixed now. And I agree with you. There were some good things today for sure, but – um, you know, to use your term about, you know, linear improvement, I think it's just the consistency. We can do it. I know we have the talent. Um, our guys are very, very talented. So we have to look at what we're doing schematically, make sure it's not too complex, make sure it's simple, because all we asked them to do was play really, really hard and execute. Effort and execution was the two things that we focused on all week. So we'll watch the film. And if the effort was there, then they get a check for that play. If the ex execution was there, they get a check. If not, then they don't. And then we'll find out who grades the champion. And it's really that simple. So, um, you know, we have to identify if we're doing the right things with them and where the breakdowns are coming from. And that's that's the coaching. And final question for coach over to the left, Cameron Teague Robinson, the athletic. Ryan, you mentioned Trevion. Oh, oh you're right. You mentioned Trevion running and like phys being physical, running yeah. strong through those holes. As you work through the growing pains of the offensive line and you work to try to get Kyle and Devin more comfortable at quarterback, how important is it to have a healthy Trevion that you can lean on? Like you said, he's probably gonna have to run the ball more sometimes. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, you can see the explosiveness and, and having him healthy is, is a home run threat at all, um, you know, any point of the game. And, and that's, that's what's fun about being around an explosive offense, you know, and that's what we keep telling the quarterbacks, you don't have to make extraordinary plays. You know, you just got to make the routine plays routinely because we have these guys. And we'll keep trying to find ways to get the ball out in space to them like we did a few times today with these guys and, and get them the touches they deserve because uh, they'll make plays. Uh, yes. Yep. Coach, thank you very okay, much. Okay, guys, thanks. All right, folks, we're we 